Find the truth. Or do the dare. Hang on for the loop. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. But are you really? Oh, what do you mean? I know you're not an imposter or a doppelganger or something like that. Well, how about you ask me a question only I would know? What song did you sing to me on my birthday? Happy birthday. All right, that checks out. Okay, but what if I told my imposter that you would ask me that question? I feel like it's getting harder to separate between what's real and what isn't. I know we've got robots writing recipes and algorithms raising our pets. And don't even get me started on how everything is cake now. It's hard to find the truth out there. Where do we start? Singing can be kind of an abstract concept. And as a voice teacher, it's my job to take something that's abstract and put it into terms and techniques that are tangible for my students to understand, practice, and comprehend. For example, I might have a student singing really forward and bright when we might want a more relaxed and floaty sound. So instead of, ah, we might want more of a, ah. So for one student, I might say, can you imagine you're singing backwards? For another student, I might say, can you imagine that your mouth is a cave and your air is going into the back of the cave? And the end result is the same. A connected, floaty feeling. Once they understand it, we do it again and again and again so they can become familiar with the feeling and grow in confidence that they know how to do it right. Another concept that can feel kind of abstract is hearing from God. We think, oh, only our pastors are the ones who can hear from God, or my parents, and not me. We make it hard too. We say, is God's voice just a voice in my head? Is it my gut? Is it an encouraging word from a friend? It can be hard especially when the world is loud, to discern God's voice. But God is a relational God, meaning that He wants us to know Him just as much as He already knows us. John 10 says this, The sheep hear His voice, and He calls His own sheep by name and leads them out. When He has brought out all His own, He goes before them, and the sheep follow Him, for they know His voice. The sheep is us. We follow a good shepherd who has called us by name. We follow him because we can hear his voice. We can use the Bible to grow familiar with God's voice. This tells us what God cares about. God is also still speaking through his Holy Spirit. So we grow familiar with God's voice and what he cares about so we can hear him and see how he is moving in the world. A teacher of mine says it this way, scripture gives the spirit a place to land. I like to approach my time with God and my time in the word by saying a simple prayer every time I open the Bible. I say, God, would you speak to me today in your word? Would you highlight your word, highlight words and phrases that you want to speak to me? And then I give him time and space for him to speak in what he has already said. That allows me to know God's voice. I can see what God is doing because I know what God already cares about. Friends, grow familiar with God's voice. He is speaking. That way you can hear him when it might not be so clear. Discernment is so important when it comes to finding truth. Oh, hey, it's Mystery Hand. Wait. Yes? How do we know it's really Mystery Hand? Can you handle the truth? Can you handle the dare? Three options will be presented to you. Only one is the real deal brand name version. The other two are generic knockoffs. If you correctly identify the true version, you are safe. If you don't, you have to do a dare. Ready for some truth or dare? 
I'm scared. Round one, which one is the real Fruit Loop and which is not? I love Fruit Loops. The yellow one in particular are my favorite. I yep. do think they taste different. The red is my least favorite one. Now, these are all circular fruit cereals, but only one can be the real one. I'm gonna vote with this one. And I think that these two are the imposters. Nope, there's an aftertaste. Yeah, so this Wait, one. Gotta try the other. Tiny circle, mm -hmm. larger circle, but this one right here, you can tell, is just right. Right there in the middle. So that's how you can tell, in my opinion. We've made our selections. Time to find out what's real and what's fake. Lyric, hello. Hello. All right. Ricky? Mm -hmm. Jamie? Yes. Right. It's not the real deal. Ah, no, no way! Yeah. No These way! These no are the way. real deal. There's no way. That's shocking. I can't believe it. All right, you know what that means. We gotta do a dare. All right, here we go. Make up a dance and perform it with your eyes closed. <laughs> That's good. All right, I have to crawl around the room. Do you want me to crawl around the room while you decide on your dance? All right, Jamie, my eyes will be closed, so look out. Crawling around the room, around the room. <coughs> crawling around the room. <coughs> behind the <coughs> The crawling buddy. <coughs> We're crawling around. This dance is called the, the compass. Just point your legs or your feet or your hands in all the directions. Okay, you just stand right there. Round two, now we are going to go with fudge stripe cookies. The one that we're trying to find is the Keebler brand. The, the elves who make the cookies in the shoe tree thing. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend having a bakery in a tree just for future reference. I feel like this chocolate looks shinier, so I feel like it looks like this is the winner. Um, Cause this, the chocolate on these looks a little more dull. I haven't even tried them yet. I'm just like making a guess off looks. Mmm, that is mm. good. Mm -hmm. I think I might be right. I'll, I'll try the other ones, mm. but I think I might be right. That's tough. Cause this chocolate is definitely richer than the other one. I'm not entirely sure. So I'm just gonna go with my like initial guess. Oh, you guessed the same one. You guessed the same one, Jamie. Ricky and Jamie, you got it right. Oh, Whoa, shiny chocolate for the win. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Take that, elf. Elves. Have you or someone you know been the victim of fakery? The law offices of Henderson and Tate will fight for you. Has this ever happened to you? You come home from a long day at court only to discover you can't get in your house because your doorknob is cake. Then you reach into your pocket to get your phone to call your family to let you into your house. But when you reach in, you pull out a handful of cake. Even though you know you would never put cake in your pocket, you put your phone in there, not cake. So you think, I'll go to the neighbor's house to get a spare key, but their whole house is gingerbread now? And you don't even know if gingerbread qualifies as cake? Enough is enough. We demand to know what is and isn't cake. The bakers are getting too good. It was fun at first, but now we don't even know what's real. Is this cake? Is this cake? Why are we even having to ask? Call Henderson and Tate and your just desserts will stay. Just desserts. They turned my dog into a cheesecake. Don't take a chance. Call Henderson and Cake. I mean, Tate. I'm Tom Tate, not Tom Cake. Right? Round three. Which one is really Sprite? I will, I'll first off say this. I used to drink Sprite like it was water, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think I will be able to tell you immediately, which I need to ask and clarify, is this bottled Sprite or canned Sprite? Survey says bottled, okay, here we go. Okay, I really like Sprite too. I typically have cherry and vanilla syrup in my Sprite though, so I might not be able to figure it out as quickly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. JK, bleh. This is so weird. That is hard to tell. The tale of two Sprites. I'm having a hard time picking one. I know that that one's knockoff. Knock off. I think that one might be I need a palate one. cleanser. I, I... Okay, I've made my selection. I'm not confident in my selection. <laughs> I want to say. Oh my gosh. This one is definitely not a Sprite. Yes. I am voting with the blue straw as the real deal Sprite. 
I am going with the red straw as the real deal. And actually the blue one for me was the one that I most immediately was like, that is not it. So I am very intrigued by this. Hello, Lyric. Oh gosh. Jamie? Yes? You got it right. I Ricky, that is not the real deal. What? Oh my gosh, that's crazy. There's no way. Yeah, There's, okay, wait, <laughs> are any of these like diet Sprite? No. I demand a recount. All right, so even though I got it right, I really want to do a dare. All right. All right, I'm going to do it. Okay, I'll do this one. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do it. Um, spin in a swivel chair for 30 seconds and then try to walk a straight line. All right, what's yours? Eat a spoonful of wasabi. No. Why is this in there? <laughs> Why? What? One, two, three. Ah, 29, 29, 30. 30. Oh my gosh. Stand up and walk a straight okay. line. I can't Stand even up, see up my butt. Walk, 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 walk is a straight. <laughs> oh, whoa, hello. Okay, and I'm there. <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and fix my chair while you do your challenge. All right, bring on the wasabi. Thank you. I don't think that's right. I think this is right. Oh, it's not gonna taste good. Can I get some sushi at least? Go, Ricky, go. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, no, mm -hmm. no. Do you have water? Oh my gosh, the chair. Mm -hmm. Super I have a of Sprite. Oh, no, no, I don't know if that's a good idea. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea. That's yeah, gonna <laughs> burn. It's worse. Oh. All right, drink the wrong Sprite. Oh yeah, there you go. Water, that's a better idea. Mm. You are a champion of wasabi. Everybody, round of applause for Ricky. All right, so while Ricky is recovering, I'm gonna go ahead and read some of the dares that we did not do. Lick the desk! That's hilarious. You know how many things have been on this desk? That's really How many funny. sea creatures have been on I this desk? I was literally desk? thinking a squid when you said that. Yeah. <gasps> Take a selfie with a stranger. That would have been so fun. These are good. To tell what is true and what is not, here's a discernment hack. Check, compare, cultivate. Those three words are gonna help you find God's truth. Check, compare, cultivate. Where did I get those words? This idea came from God's word. I was reading this in, in uh, the book that Paul wrote to the Romans. You ready for this? Here's what he says. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Check. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you. And you will agree that what he wants is right. Compare. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Cultivate. I thought we could try it out with a little phrase that you might hear in songs or in movies or in books, or maybe it, it like appears to you in some soup. Here's, here's the statement. You ready for this? Follow your heart. Have you heard this before? I'll be honest, it might not sound true, but it certainly sounds nice. Like, like it's, it's probably not gonna hurt anyone to give this advice, right? Follow your heart. But when you follow your heart, or to say it another way, when something feels true to you, does that make it true? Let's check, compare, and cultivate. So first, you stop and you check the source. As followers of Jesus, we believe that the Bible is a reliable source of God's truth. So when I say check the source, I mean look at God's word. Take this idea of following your heart and, and what you want and see if that's something that the Bible encourages or warns against. Check out the Old Testament. It's this, this like first chunk of the book. Starting with Adam and Eve and Abraham and throughout, you see these stories of God inviting people to full life, but instead, Humans choose to follow their own heart and desires. And are the results good? No. <laughs> they, they make a mess. They make mess after mess. And when they choose their own heart over God's guidance. When you check the Bible, it's hard to ignore all the examples that show how sin deceives us into thinking we know better than God. That's just not true. The truth is that we need God to guide us. So that's what the source says. What's next? Ah, compare. <laughs> so you slow down and compare God's truth to your choices. On the one hand, you've got your heart, and the other, you've got God's guidance. Compare the two. You can see examples in the Bible and in your own life that when you follow your heart, your thoughts and desires, you find temporary results. But ultimately, it leads to living death. Like, that's literally, that's in the Bible. It leads to living death. That's not an overstatement. That's a big yikes. <laughs> On the other hand, when you follow God, it might not be easy to give up what you want, but ultimately you'll be fully living. After testing and comparing the two, which truth sounds like truth? And what do we do with it? 
cultivate. <laughs> Go and cultivate good fruit. I love this word cultivate, cultivate, cultivate. It means to develop and prepare and care for something. In some cases it's crops or a skill, but in the case we're talking about, it's with the fruit of the spirit. When you cultivate the truth and choose God's reality, watch your life be full of good fruit. What do you cultivate or develop or prepare when you trust God over your own thoughts and desires? Well, it's things like love and patience and goodness, and faithfulness and self-control. Instead of doing whatever feels good to you, you choose to do what God knows is good for you. Check, compare, cultivate. Just because you want something to be true doesn't mean it is. Are you following what you feel or what is real? God is trustworthy. That's the truth. Okay, are you feeling any more or less confident that you can find the truth? It's never truly easy, but I really like the hack of check, compare, and cultivate. That makes it a lot easier. Am I really me? Still checking, comparing, and cultivating, so I'll get back to you. Okay, sounds good. Let God guide you to better discernment. And as you search for His reality, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride! Oh, this dare says that we should like and subscribe to the Loop Show YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. And that way, whenever you subscribed, you can watch this other really awesome food challenge where we tasted different chocolates. Yeah, and tried to guess which one was the fanciest. If you are a fan of fancy chocolate, you will love this episode. It was delicious.